now let's look into images and containers together if you are unfamiliar with docker this may be the first time you have come across the words containers and images in this context in software context okay so you might have heard in some other context in shipping related or transport related or workshop related but here it's software related deployment related so they are probably the most important concept in docker so it's worth spending a bit of time to make sure the difference between uh, image and container is pretty pretty clear so in this slide you will see an illustration of these concepts image and container so with three containers started up from one image of course we have done it in our previous ex examples so but still i just want to make it clear so one way to look at images and containers is to see them as analogous to programs and processes in the same way a process can be seen as an application being executed a docker container can be viewed as a docker image in execution so if you are familiar with object oriented principles another way to look at images and containers is to view images as classes and containers as objects in the same way that objects are concrete instantiations of classes containers are instantiations of images so you can create multiple containers from a single image and they are all they are all isolated from one another in the same way objects are so whatever you change in the object it won't affect the class definition they are fundamentally different things the same thing is applicable to here so let's take this example which you see on the screen so the base image that we are going to check is ubuntu this is our base image docker ubuntu uh, that we can get from official website of docker hub that is uh, Where is that Docker Hub? Yeah, this is your uh, official Ubuntu image. That's what we have considered here. So now, this official Ubuntu image consists of a, uh, as usual, directory system or file system, a bin bash, bin bunjip, busy catch, and a lot of files in it. And and it consists of metadata such as port mapping, environment variables, and it consists of all the directories that a Linux machine consists of. So that is our base Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu image. The Docker image consists of files and metadata. So, so image file, image files take up most of the space. Why? When you see, I have, I have shown you both a Docker image and container. Container will be, will be, container can be spun within a second. Whereas to build an image, it takes huge amount of time. Why? because image files take up most of the space because of the isolation each container provides they must have their own copy of any required tools including language environments or libraries because image consists of all the files even if your application code if you have a source code that source code or you have a package package everything will be placed in the docker image only so that is the reason it is too heavy then now let's build 
uh, three containers from this image. So the container one. Now let's run a container one. So container one has taken Ubuntu as a base image, but the process which is running inside this is Node.js. But it take it the base image is Ubuntu only. Okay, container run one process on startup. When this process completes, the container stops. So that's this startup process can spawn the other. And changes to files are stored within the container in a copy on a write mechanism. The base image cannot be affected by a container. And we'll look into the second container. Similarly, second container is also going to use base image Ubuntu. But the process that is going to run here is MySQL. Okay. So here. And the third container, similar to that, base image is Ubuntu. Whereas the process is running is Apache 2. So here it's going to deploy an application. So containers are created. To conclude this and uh, the matter of the fact and then if you put everything in a nutshell containers are created from images inherit their file systems and use their metadata to determine their start of configuration so containers are separate but can be configured to communicate with each other so now let's uh, look into the most important concept or activity of docker is to writing a docker file till now what we have done till now we did not even write a single docker file we did not build a single doc single docker image everything is pulled from the official yeah. docker hub everything we have pulled it from official docker hub so now we're going to write our first docker file and we are going to build our first docker image also and we are going to run our docker container from the docker image so all those things we are going to do but without a docker file you can never ever customize your applications if you want to add a source code your source code how can you do you have to write you have to create your own docker file taking the inspiration from the existing docker files and using the base images of official base images from uh, docker hub so now let's look into uh, how to write a docker image how to write a docker file so there are four standard ways to create docker images so the following table itemizes these methods the first by hand so option is fine if you are doing proofs of concepts poc to see whether your installation process works at the same time you should be keeping notes about the steps you are taking so that you can return to the sum to the same point if you need to and second you have a, a docker file so in this case you have to write your own docker file the first one is uh, it's by hand it's nothing but uh, by typing a docker commands one by one okay fire up a container with docker run and then put the commands to create your image on the docker command line so that's one and second one is using a docker file for docker file build from a known base image and specify build with a limited set of simple commands that's called uh, writing a docker file and docker file and configuration management tools so you can use a configuration management tool with the docker file uh, they act hand in hand to bring uh, to make a sophisticated application so big very big applications and microservices or scratch image and import a set of files from an empty image import a tar file with the required 
files so these are different ways of doing but however the widely used methods are docker file method and docker file and configuration management tool for the complex and complicated applications okay now we are going to do a docker file method okay a docker file what is a docker file what is a docker file a docker file is a text file with a series of commands or instructions you say commands but they are commands but fundamentally they are instructions in it that's it a docker file is a text file with a series of commands or instructions in it that's what we call it as a docker file so so let's uh, look into a docker file so a docker file begins with from so you begin the docker file by de defining the base image with the from command so this here in, in the from command the value that we have given is the argument that we have gave for the from command is node so node it this uses a node.js image so you have to access to the node.js binaries so the official node.js image is called a node and thus will that base image will be pulled from the docker hub so then we have next you will declare the maintainer and now it's deprecated but still maintainer so maintainer so maintainer command consists of an argument so that argument you can give your email address uh, uh, just for reference it's not that important then we have one more command that is you clone the app code with a run command this uses the specified command to retrieve the code of the application so running git within the container within the container git is installed inside the base node image in this case but you can't take this kind of things for granted you have to be make sure while doing these operations so if it is not installed by default so it's better to attach that command also run apt get install sudo apt get install git and space and option y so you have to give by default if it installed but if it is not installed it's better to install okay then we have work dir app so what is work dir app so once now you moved to the new clone directory with a work dir command so not only does it change directory within the build context but the last work dir command determines which directory you are in by default when you start up your container from your built image so work dir app when you say work dir app whenever you log into your container or whenever the container is started whenever the container is spun at that moment immediately the default folder the default directory or home directory of the container would be this app whatever actions that happen that will happen in this directory because that's the home directory that's the working directory see when you log into the linux server or ec2 instance where do you log in by default you log into your user's home directory similarly here also whatever you say work there app that is the by default when you log into your linux uh, when you log into your container you will enter into that directory okay then let's do run again one more time now you run the node package managers install command npm and this will set up the dependencies for your application you are if you are if you aren't interested in the output here you can redirect this output to the dev null directory then we have expose uh, the port 8000 is used by this application so that's why we want to expose this application to the 8080 of the container port okay so use the expose command to tell docker that containers from the built image should listen to this port at 8080 and finally the most important command is cmd 
you use the cmd command to tell docker which command will be run on start up the container on start up of the container so all will be run remaining all commands or all instructions will be run will be executed during the building the image the only one command will be executed when you spin a container is cmd okay when you say docker build all other commands will be executed from from node till expose 8080 but this is the one is not going to execute it during the building the image this one will be executed only only when you spin a container when you run a container so now uh, let's uh, we have seen uh, how to write a simple uh, docker file so now let's do our first exercise by writing a simple simple welcome welcome docker file <laughs> 